Welcome back. From the control file, we have the redo log file. Like we studied in the previous sections, we say that the redo log file store a SQL statement that calls a change to data permanently. These SQL statements are really important when we need to undo some stuff or when we need to go back in time to check what really happened to our database. The redo log files are always stored in groups. They are called redo log groups and each group must have a minimum of one redo log file. So a minimum of two redo log groups is necessary for Oracle to operate. And remember we say the log writer writes information from the redo log buffer where it is stored temporarily to this file which is the redo log file. Now the log writer writes to this file in a fashion we call the circular fashion. Let's see. Let me come back to my website. My reference. We have this diagram I borrowed from the Oracle documentation and indeed when you look at it, it is showing you how the log writer writes to the redo log files. We say the redo log files are stored in redo log groups. These are redo log groups and this is a database. Down here the entire thing is a database. So what happens is these files are stored in these redo log groups. We have a number of them you can see. Redo log group 1, 2, 3, there are so many indeed. The redo log buffer store a SQL statement that causes a change. Remember, it is in the SGA, but it is stored here temporarily. It has to be stored in the redo log file. So the log writer writes information from the redo log buffer direct to the members or to the redo log files in the redo log groups. Now it keeps on writing. You can see it is writing on this file. It first wrote on this. Now the gray color here show that this group is complete or this file, the files in these groups are complete. We can't write anything more because it is finished. It is full. So this one is full. Even this one is full. Then once it is full, the log writer moves to another group. It writes. Once it is full, it moves to another one. It writes. Once the entire process is done, once everything is done, once all the groups are full, group 1 is full, group 2 is full, group 3 is full, the log writer doesn't stop. It has to continue its work. What happens is Oracle activates the archival process. This is what happens. When the moment all the groups are done, Oracle activates the archival process, which is an optional background process, to get the information that was previously stored on these on these redo log files in these full groups and it takes that information to a place we call the or to another file we call the archived redo log file. So we get the information from here, archival process picks the information from here and then takes it to this archived redo log file where it is stored permanently to create more space for the log writer to continue writing on the redo log files. So it gets the information from here, pastes it on this, gets it from here to archive redo log file. So the archive redo log file is also another file in the database whose purpose is to store the redo log entries that were previously stored on the redo log file. Once more, the redo log entries are stored in the redo log buffer in the SGA. The log writer picks information from this buffer to the redo log files, but the redo log files are also stored in groups. So the log writer writes on the first group once it gets full, it moves to the second, the third. Once all groups are complete, a archival process is activated to empty the first groups to ensure that the log writer continues to work to write the changes here to the files. So the archival process is activated, and once it is activated, the database is said to be in the archive log mode. So once that is done, then the archive process can begin getting information from here to the archived redo log files. So we can create more groups, we can create more redo log groups and we create files within. How do we do that? Let's see this in action. We need to connect as administrators as usual. Let's look at the groups we have and the members in each group. We can do that using the V$ log file. When we check, we can see that we have a lot of members. We have 
three groups group one group two and group three and group one has this member group two has this member and group three has two members so we can create another group we can add another group which is group four by just issuing outer database add the log file group to group four you can name it any anything you want if you don't want group four you can name it anything so when you do that you can see that another member another group has been added now we need a member in each remember each group must have at least a member so let's add one member so we just say auto database add log file member and then we need the name of the member we are going to use the location here the path. so this is the command and uh, we are using the path we need to give our redo log file a name let us call it students we just need and we are adding it to group 4 which we created so we are saying make a change to the database add this member and we are getting the path for that member and we are giving it uh, we are getting the path where this file will be stored and then we are using we are giving it a name called students and we are saying add it to group 4 so when we run they say the database has been so when we when we check again the group number and the members you can see that now we have group 4 group 4 has been created this one i didn't complete it but i think the statement ran and then it has a file called a student so we have two members in the group and then it is a student apart from the redo log file we also have what we call the data file and what the data file does is it stores data permanently like we have seen in the previous episode so each data file must belong to only and only one table space the data file works with the database writer and the checkpoint process like we saw we shall see how we create the table space and then with the data file later after looking at the table space so apart from these three files they're extremely important we have the data file the control file and the redo log file also have other files like the parameter files that you want stores this files all the parameters all the settings database settings we have two of them the sp file and the p file and these are the ones you have been seeing me manipulating working with when we say outer system control file is equal to we are making a change in a parameter we are making changes in system parameters so uh, these are these parameters or settings are stored in a place we call the parameter files we also have other files like the archive redo log file we have seen that one we say that it stores the redo log entries from the redo log we also have the alert log file this file alerts us of any error that happens in the database so that is what this file does so these are the physical files we have in Oracle. There are so many, we cannot finish all of them. But the major ones are the control file, the data file, and the redo log file. Apart from those, you also have what you call the logical structures. And indeed, when you talk about the logical storage structures, we mean the table space, segment, extents, and blocks. We are not going to waste a lot of time here. The table space, we said, it stores data files it stores data files that is its work table spaces help us in organizing data and making our backup process so easier you don't need to back up everything you can just say i need to back up only a given table space so table spaces are really wonderful wonderful tools in helping us in administering and managing the database we have default table spaces like the system that is used to store data dictionaries we have the sysox we have the users etc there are so many default table spaces but we can also create our own table spaces so we are going to learn how we can create a table space and then how we can add a table how we can add data files to that table space so we need to be connected as administrators for us to be able to so we have a number of data files in you can use the v dollar data file you don't need to worry about this just know that this is the table we can get data from so this is these are the table spaces with these are the data files we have now we want to create another table space with one data file let us create a table space we call now we are going to just pick this one of these so we are going to just make a change here to 
create a table space and we are adding a data file the table space is called clients and the data file we are going to call it just clients again so we just copied this location we need it to be stored here but the name should be clients not hr if i leave it to for that it will cause a conflict i need to give it a size how much size how big will this data file be let me just give it 100 m 100 megabytes when i when i run you can see that the table space has been created so when i run again i see and now see that i have a data file called clients so that is how we create table spaces and that is how we can add data files in our table spaces then the table, the table space has a data file and the data file is also broken down into segments extents and blocks segment is just a collection of extents then extents are collection of blocks then blocks are the smallest storage unit in oracle so we begin from blocks then extents make up then blocks make up extents then extents make up segments and then from the segment we have our data file and then the table space that has been for the storage structures and it was a lengthy one but it was so wonderful in the next section we are going to look at instance management let's meet the